In this lesson, we're going to take a look at archiving. Archiving applies to the local file system, and it's a nice feature that allows you to store local configuration data, essentially small objects, and keep them roughly in object format. iCloud has a similar feature in its ability to store key value pairs. So we're going to take a look at archiving first, and we'll take a look at the iCloud key value pairs later on. But there are some differences, and I'll point them out. In our storyboard, the archive data that we're going to store is the user's full name, email address, username, and password. And we'll just have a submit button to actually submit and store the archive, and a clear button just to clear that out. In our code, we create properties for all of the controls, and we're going to handle the submit and clear button touched events. And as always with the local file system, we create a NS file manager object and a documents directory string. In this case, we're also going to create an archive file string. We create our file manager as we always do, getting the default manager, and we get the documents directory in the same way, searching for directories in our domain, passing in the documents directory parameter. Then we create our archive file string, and we do that by needing a string using the documents directory and appending the path, and we give it a file name, app.archive. It could be any file name, but this is as good as any. This is when the app first starts up, so what we want to do is we want to check for any configuration information at startup. So we'll take a look at the file manager and see if the archive file exists, and we'll call a file exists at path. If it does exist, then we'll create ourselves a mutable array, and we're going to use that to read the archive file with. So we'll use nskeyed unarchiver, unarchive the object file, and we pass in the file name into that method. That essentially deserializes the archive into our mutable array. Once we've done that, we get the first element of the array and set the text name text to it. Likewise, the second element goes into the email, the third element goes into the username, and the fourth element goes into the password. So if that archive file does exist, we're pre-populating those with the information from the archive file. You also note that we're doing it with an array, so we don't know the names of the elements. It's not a key value pair, which is the way iCloud will do it. The archive file also has to be stored in exactly the same order, so you have to keep the order straight. We write the archive file when the submit button is touched. We have a mutable array, and we allocate that, and then we start adding objects to it. So we add the text name first, the email second, username third, and the password fourth. Again, in exactly the same order that we wanted to read them. Then we use the ns keyed archiver method, and we archive our root object, passing in the archive array and the archive file name and that does the save to the archive. So we have a object for a user, but it's a similar kind of approach, and you could see how you might put this into a layer for your handling configuration file and be able to get objects out of it. When the clear button is touched, we just simply remove the archive file entirely. We can just delete it. We could likewise pass in an array with cleared text objects as well and check for null strings when we read it, but this is just as easy in our case. So let's give it a run. We don't have an archive file now, so we should get empty text boxes. We have hint fields. We'll put in a good email address and a quick username and an equally quick password, and we'll submit that. And that's now written to the archive file. So now if I close this app and restart it, we should be reading the archive file and populating the text boxes with it. And you can see that that worked just fine. So that's a nice way to work with configuration data. As I mentioned before, iCloud has a similar feature using key-valued pairs, so you can use these in conjunction with archive files in order to be able to share configuration data across devices. So that completes our look at the local file system.